What's a not a mistake? How about three not a mistakes? Three not a mistakes for newbie writers. That's this week's episode for The Right Focus. Welcome to The Right Focus, a podcast for writers on productivity, process, tools, and craft. This is our second episode following our inaugural episode on seven mistakes that newbie writers make. The Right Focus is a production of Writers Inc. Books. I'm Emma Lee here to share what I've learned in my years of writing and teaching writers, as well as my years of pursuing self-publication. My first book's published in 2015, and I haven't looked back since. I write both in and nonfiction, and Emma Lee is just one of my pen names, because, you know, we change names to protect the innocent. The mantra for Writers, Inc. is dream it, believe it, do it. Hopefully, that will become your goal as well. The topic for this episode is three not a mistakes by a newbie writer. First, a little context. This first, a little context. This episode and our first one last week arose from a question that a newbie writer asked on a forum hosted by a national writing organization. The newbie wanted to know what we wished we had known when we launched our careers. I'm sharing my response to her emails with you because, well, these are jam-packed and craft and tools and more. What is a newbie not a mistake? It's a mistake that many, many new writers make, but which you can avoid just as I did. Here's newbie not a mistake number one, knowing that first impressions matter. The mistake would be to do every job related to publishing by yourself, especially the most important job, job, which is the first impression on the reader. My not a mistake? Well, I hired a cover designer. Unless you truly understand graphic design, the direction of cover models' eyes, color contrasting, proportional sizing, foreground against background, then hire a cover designer. The cover is the first thing a reader. You have nanoseconds to snare readers. A great cover will draw readers to your book. Great cover designers understand the needs of genre as well as branding for the book, the author, and the series. I talked about author branding in the first episode. Branding helps you focus closely and maintain that focus as you write, then launch your man to the world. Pick a genre. Pick a series. Pick a main character. A brand means that you are laser-eyed on that genre and series. These reinforce your author brand. Who we are as writers, what we write, how we present our writing to the world. In 2013 and 14, when I launched into my indie writer writer journey, the independent marketplace for electronic books offered a wide range. It still does, but the lower end of the spectrum is gradually going away. Excellent covers, cheaply made covers, all words and no images, horrible covers, that's the spectrum mark points. Whenever you consider self-publishing, You have to juggle what what you can do with what you shouldn't do. One part of the decision-making process is Wibbo. Would I be better off writing? W-I-B-B-O-W. That should drive the first and strongest part of your decision process. Other considerations are cost and time. When I launched, I wanted to spend my time writing, not learning. I still want that focus. Looking for a cover designer on the internet would surely not be hard, I thought. Looking wasn't hard. Finding wasn't hard. Finding a cover designer that had a portfolio that fit my vision as well as one who had clearly presented the cover design business as a professional endeavor, extra hard. hard. Three parts to that one. Did you see them? Portfolio means they were generating work over and over again. My own vision means that we would have few clashes over aesthetic differences. Professional means, well, there are more and more horror stories about graphic designers and money down the drain and covers yanked back after they were designed and not properly licensing images used and on and on. Yikes. Longer story short, I thought finding a cover designer would be easy. Nope. Took 18 months off and on looking month after month to find a cover designer that matched my aesthetic and that showed promise of staying as a professional business rather than starting up then closing down in three to four years. I searched online repeatedly. I scanned online bookstores and opened up a lot of samples to search for the cover designer. I bookmarked several signs, but something about the portfolios didn't fit what I was looking for. Sometimes the price was unreasonable. Sometimes the information that accompanied the portfolio didn't connect with me. Elio didn't connect with me. In that 18 months, some cover designers vanished. New ones came on. 
While looking, I managed to write the third book while holding down a horrible creativity-sucking job and format the other three books to electronic publishing standards and even tinker with a few as-yet-unwritten ideas, along with pulling from storage another historical romance suspense but in a different time period. Eighteen months. In that time, I also set aside a little bit of money every month to pay for the cover designs of four books. I actually located the cover designer that I would use by browsing online bookstores. The website had a professional look with several varieties of covers. The site listed ways of covers. The site listed what to do when problems occurred and a three-page template anticipated design questions and open up creativity for the designer. I contracted for my first cover in 2015. Since then, they have created over 10 nonfiction covers, 15 mystery covers, and 10 fantasy covers, plus covers for bundles in all of their work. Want to do it yourself? Then pay the bucks for a quality program like InDesign, not Canva or PowerPoint. Still determined to do it yourself? Seriously, study your competition. Do your research. Admit the ones that look crappy and admit what your skill level is. Finally, use the greater, greatest writing test in the world, Wibbo. That's your question every time you start to take on an additional writer job. Cover design? Yes or no? Wibbo. I managed to avoid this first mistake because the intensive, stressful job I had sapped my creative energies, which slowed my writing. Knowing I could not quickly learn cover design or a software program for the design, I decided my program for the design, I decided my spare time should be on writing. Newbie, not a mistake. Number two, finish before sharing. The mistake is to share your ideas and your draft. Sharing piecemeal, a chapter at a time never works. Readers need to see the whole work. Sharing your ideas? Well, let's talk. If you are desperate for other fine, good beta readers who spot plot and character discrepancies, as well as proofreading errors, only give these readers a finished manuscript. Finished is the most important word here. Write the story in your head, not the story in someone else's head. You don't need developmental editors to write that story. You may need a good friend who will tell you when who will tell you when scenes need to be improved and ideas need a logical sequence. That only occurs though with the finished manuscript. Have them read the finished manuscript and tell you where they got lost. Then dig deep into those areas and work it out. Please do not give readers a chapter at a time. Can they remember the flow of the story? Maybe. Can they remember using foreshadowing? Can they remember the symbolic metaphor that you planted in chapter 3, which will recur in chapter 15, then lead to the climax in chapter 36? Remember, they are looking at these individual chapters or scenes with days or weeks or a whole month intervening. Good friends will read the whole thing for you. It might take them a while. Great, all. Great friends will tell you what doesn't work. Bad friends will tell you how to fix it. Yes, I said bad friends. Because it's your story, you need to figure out how to fix it. Your muse will do that for you once the muse knows to work on a particular area. If your muse tries to work with other people's ideas, she will shut her trap on ideas. Trap on ideas. Here's a third reason to avoid sharing before you are finished. Superstition. The writing world has a myth that story ideas shared before completion will dry up and shrivel or be cursed when published. I don't know the reason for the myth. That reason never is shared. But I have seen story ideas bounced around in a group and the writer's enthused. I have shared a story idea and watched an another writer spin it in a better way than I had planned, which killed my enthusiasm for that story. We've all heard anecdotes about writers sharing ideas only to see another writer with flying fingers get that story out into the world first. Yeah, don't share your ideas until they are done. Finally, when you send the draft into the world, the universal ether thinks it's a completed story and directs your muse to dance around to the next story. So finish the dying thing before you hand it off to good and great friends. I avoided the second mistake from the sheer luck of living two and one half hours away from other writers like me. At the time, my town did have writers, but they weren't pursuing publication the way I was. They were writing only for the name of being a writer. They also were elitist. I talked about them in the first episode. A decade later, I found two other groups, both were a half hour away, and only met on weeknights. The meetings ran too late for the early wake up my job request. That stressful, creativity sucking job. By the time I had an opportunity for an easily accessed writers group with critique groups, I had learned my lesson about finishing before sharing and about learning from pro writers as opposed to not professional writers. I talked about that in episode one too. Newbie not a mistake number three. Keep learning as you live. Newbie, not a mistake. Number three. 
Keep learning as you live the writer life. Here's the mistake. Thinking you are a talented writer. Or thinking you have learned everything about writing. Nope. Not possible. Keep learning and practicing your craft. Even after 30 years of teaching literature, high school and college, even with advanced degrees in English and composition, five years of pursuing self-publishing, even after over 25 published books, I am still learning. New information keeps us fresh. Practicing that new information, that stretches our skills and builds improvement. Analyze your weaknesses. One of my weaknesses that I diagnosed early on was understanding little about the new world of selling. In hunting up information, I stumbled into pro writers teaching craft courses. One online workshop turned me into a believer. No one will ever know everything there is to know about writing, but we can try. I have three courses to take this year, two on the craft of writing, one on marketing, and I am learning a lot. I'm still trying, just like a doctor praying, just like a doctor practices medicine. The only difference is... I might speak with authority, but I will freely admit that I have more to learn. Think a doc will say that? Find a pro that you trust. Make sure that pro is still producing words and publishing those words, not a pro resting on dried up laurels. Many pros offer a variety of online courses. One of the pros that I follow in the first episode. If you don't want to take a course, then do your research. Read books on craft, not academic books. Books by writers. Books about writing. This third not a mistake was another lucky chance that I stumbled into. As I prepped for publication, I discovered tons of information that I didn't know about the new indie pu- I didn't know about the new indie publishing and the world of marketing. I'm still learning that one by the way. Here's the summary. First, understand that first impressions matter. The number one impression is your cover. If you're not excellent at design, hire a contractor. Not great at grammar? Hire an editor. Your guiding question is Wibbo. Would I be better off writing? For sharing. Sharing is not wrong, but you need to send out a completed draft. This helps your readers and you. Your readers will see the whole vision, not the fragments. As for you, your story ideas won't be killed by other writers. Remember the difference between great friends who tell you something's not working for them, and bad friends who want to tell you how to people's sticky fingers in your work. Number three, keep learning. Look for ways to grow. Analyze your weaknesses. Research and teach yourself or go to the writing pros. That's it for this second episode of The Right Focus. Coming up, we'll continue with that newbie writer questions by focusing on the steps to get the book from the idea stage to tangible product by focusing on the steps to get the book from the idea stage to tangible product in your hands. Don't forget to check the show notes. Thanks for joining.